Hello and welcome to Tuts Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak. In this video, I'm going to show you the new features added to InDesign CC and Illustrator CC in 2014 January. First, I would like to start with something that you will find in both of these applications, and that is the Typekit integration. Creative Cloud includes a new way to access and implement fonts in your creative work in InDesign and in Illustrator. It's called Typekit. So if you have Creative Cloud membership, you can find this in the Creative Cloud application, the Typekit, which is both for web and desktop use. So you can browse for these fonts and then install on your computer. But the best thing is now you can actually do it directly from the applications. So if I zoom a little bit closer and I change my mind that I would like to use a different font for these icons here, I can just simply select it, select the text here. And then I can go to the character options. And here I can find the add fonts from Typekit button. Once I click on that, I can choose a new font from um, the website. Here I can have the desktop use selected and then I can search for the fonts available. There are plenty of options. So maybe I'm going to use this one here or maybe this one. This is a little bit different to what we have already in the design. So I'm going to click on it and then I click on use fonts and it tells me what's going to be installed. So if I click on sync selected fonts, then now I can go back to Illustrator and I will be able to find the font if I click on filtering for Typekit. So if I click on that, I can very quickly find Museo Slab and I can select it and apply it to my text. So after this point, it's very easy to again use the same one. I can just simply keep the filtering on and then select it again. But what if I change my mind and I want to um, go back to another font and I don't need this font anymore? Well, I can go to the back to the browser and here I can find the font that I just installed. So if I close this, I can click again on use fonts and I can remove all the synchronized fonts. So if I remove it, and I go back to Illustrator. Now, if I select this text, it will revert or it will tell me that it's a missing font and I should be able to change this to something else. So I can now select no filtering for these and maybe select another font. But the great thing about this feature is that even if you have a document which was saved with a Typekit uh, font and it's missing from your computer, then InDesign or Illustrator can automatically download those missing fonts. So let me show that to you. I'm going to InDesign and I open a document which has uh, the uh, Typekit font in inside it. So it will come up with the missing font dialog box, which we usually uh, get whenever we have a missing font. But in this case, because it's a Typekit font that is missing, it will tell me it can automatically sync the font and install it on my desktop. So instead of looking for the font manually, I can just simply click on sync fonts and then it automatically downloads this font and I won't have to do anything. So it will update in the whole document and uh, use this installed font. But let's go back to Illustrator and let's have a look at a couple of other features that's been added this time. The next feature I want to show you is called Live Corners in Illustrator. And this is a really cool addition, which makes it much easier to work with the corners of shapes. So the example I want to concentrate is this mountain here, which I can select. And if I click on any of these corner points, you will see that little additional element uh, or control point with which we can change how the corner point looks like. So if I click and drag it down, I can quickly create a rounded corner or later on I can turn it back into a sharp corner. If I click on the whole object, I can even do this on all the corners at once. So I can change them all together and uh, individually as well. And this works with every element. So if I just create a new shape, 
as you can see if I have the direct selection tool and I start dragging these corner points I can control them just the same way as the other object so you don't need to make any changes you don't have to add this as an effect it's automatically available on every shape that you select remember you have to use the direct selection tool and not the path selection tool and it will only affect the selected corners so if you want to affect only one of the corners make sure you first select that and then it won't affect the other deselected corners you can also double click on a corner and then you will be able to type in a specific radius and you can even choose different uh, styles for the corner so you can have round inverted round or chamfer by the way, you can also access these options not only by double clicking on the um, pinpoints, but you can also click here on top on corners or you can even just type in the corner radius here as well. There's also a couple of improvements on the pencil tool, which will help you to draw freehand and uh, to be able to fit your curves and uh, just correct them. So if you set the option on the pencil tool to smooth instead of accurate then illustrator will try to align your curves and try to create the least amount of anchor points and if you have the option keep selected then you can also join path segments so you can continue drawing from one end point and draw the next line and you can even connect and close the third part so you can start from one side and go all the way to the top you can see how much nicer it looks once I let go and Illustrator does the rest of the job fitting the curve. But I can also hold down shift to draw uh, on an angle. So I can hold down shift and I can draw in 45 degrees or I can also draw completely vertically or horizontally. And once again, I can join these two lines together to create a curve there try that again something like that another new or improved feature is called the path segment reshape which you can access either using the direct selection tool or the anchor point tool so once you have these tools selected and you hover over any path you will get this special cursor which is the path segment reshape and with this one you can very easily reshape any of these segments another cool thing that you can do is to hold down shift and click on a path segment and then both direction handles on the endpoints will turn into a symmetrical uh, handle and that will make it easier to create shapes like this Another cool thing that you can do is that you can even turn straight lines into curved lines. So if I hover over this path segment here, I can click and drag and I can turn it into a curved path. We also have a way of now creating our own custom tools panel. From the window menu under tools, we can create this by choosing new tools panel. I'm just going to call it my tools click on OK and then as you can see it's a new toolbar but it's currently empty and it only has the swatches here at the bottom but if I uh, know that I like to work with let's say the pencil tool I can just drag and drop it into this new toolbar and then if I want to use the type tool I can position that as well there I can switch between two columns or one column mode as well and I can create my own set of tools very quickly and easily so if I close this and I need it next time I just go to window tools my tools and it will remember the options that I created and just like the main toolbar this can be docked into anywhere where you can normally dock a panel so it can be docked here on the right or it can be docked also on the left another cool new feature is the responsive SVG this feature means that complex vector graphics can visually scale within a web page for clear viewing on mobile devices or when browser windows are resized so Illustrator CC now provides the ability to make responsive SVG files and it's very simple to do it you just have to go to file save as 
once SVG is selected and you just type in the file name and you click on save here in the more options you will find responsive and by default it's selected so if you save a file like this that means whenever it's used on a website it will automatically respond to the changes of the browser so first let me show you if you save uh, something without this responsive option it will look like this you can see this part of the website is the SVG file and it doesn't interact or doesn't respond to the changes of the uh, browser itself but if I select the other version where we can uh, where we have the responsive SVG embedded that will always change its size depending on what's the size of the website. Responsive web design is a must or a standard now, so it's very important to have these features also in Illustrator. It can help a lot and save a lot of time whenever you uh, design for the web in Illustrator. There's also an improvement for hyperlinks in InDesign. If I want to add a hyperlink, for example, for this text here, I can just simply right click and then choose hyperlinks and new hyperlink. And so far it's very similar to the way it used to work. Now I'm going to just copy in a URL and click on OK. And once I created a hyperlink, when I use the type tool, I can see that in the character styles, I have already a hyperlink character style and if I select that for this text it will automatically turn it into blue and underline it. So whenever in the future I want to use a hyperlink I can just simply use this character style and that will give a visual clue that this is actually a hyperlink in the document. Also if we go to the hyperlink panel so it's under window interactive hyperlinks we have a new indication which tells us whether the links that we used in our document are active or in case they are invalid it would be a red sign here. So these were the main improvements to Illustrator and InDesign Creative Cloud and hopefully you will be able to make most of them in your future projects. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time here on Touch Plus.